Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at some basic logarithmic properties and how I can use those properties to simplify logarithmic expressions without the use of a calculator. So first off, if I have log of a to the b, I can rewrite this exponent as multiplication in front. So this becomes b times log of a. If I'm multiplying something, so log of a times b, I can split that up into addition, log a plus log b. Log of a over b, division, I can split that up into subtraction, log of a minus log of b. If I take the log of base b, or really any base of 1, that's always going to be equal to 0. So remember that I can always rewrite a logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. So this is the same thing as b to the 0 equals 1. So anything to the 0 is always going to be 1, which is why log of any base of 1 will always equal 0. Log base b of b will always equal 1. So if I take b to the first power, that's equal to itself. So if the base of the log and what you're taking the log of match, that'll always equal 1. For log base b of b to the a, I know from this rule up here that I can rewrite that a in front. So it's a times log base b of b. And we know from this rule that log base b of b is equal to 1. a times 1 would just be a, which means that if I'm taking the log of any base and what I'm taking the log of match, the whole log essentially just cancels out and you're left with that exponent a. The same thing happens in the reverse. So if I have a base b and that's raised to an exponent that has a log with a matching base as the base from the exponent, the base and the log essentially cancel out and I'm left with what I was taking the log of, which is a. ln of e. So remember ln is really log with base e. So if I have, again, the same base that I'm taking the log of, they pretty much just cancel out. I end up with 1. ln of 1 is 0. And then e to the ln x, this is one where the base and the base of the log match. So essentially those cancel out and you're left with that exponent x. Let's look at some examples where I'll have to apply these rules to simplify expressions. Number one, e to the ln five. So the base and the log base cancel. You're left with just what you're taking the log of, five. ln of e is one, that goes away. You're left with that exponent, two. E to the 5 ln 2. So this 5 is kind of in the way. Here the E and the ln were touching, right? They get to cancel out. Here, since the 5 is in the way, I need to move it out of the way before I can cancel like I did in number 1. So using the rule that says multiplication in front can become an exponent, I can rewrite this as E to the ln of 2 to the 5th. So now that my E and ln are touching, those cancel, and I'm left with what I was taking the ln of, which was 2 to the 5th. So this simplifies to just 32. ln of rad e. So the rad e I can write as e to the half. And now I can bring that exponent to the front as multiplication, 1 half ln e. ln of e is equal to 1. So this expression is just equal to a half. Number five, I'm going to first rewrite this multiplication in front as an exponent. So that would be ln of 3 squared, which is the same thing as ln of 9. And now I'm going to work left to right. So this addition becomes multiplication. So that would be ln of 2 times 9, which is ln of 18. And then ln of 18 minus ln of 18 is just 0. Number 6, e to the negative 2 of ln 3 plus 3 ln 2. I'm first going to rewrite these multiplications in front as exponents. So I have e to the ln of 3 to the negative 2 plus ln of 2 cubed. Now, I know if I have a base and I'm adding the exponents up here that before this, this was really multiplication. So I, I can actually split this up and write it as e to the ln of 3 to the negative 2 times e to the ln of 2 cubed. So now that I have two separate e to the somethings, the e and the lns cancel and you're left with what you were taking the ln of. So now I have 3 to the negative 2 times 2 cubed. 3 to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over 3 to the positive 2. So that would be 1 over 9 times 2 cubed is 8. 
So this simplifies to 8 over 9. Number 7, e to the negative ln of 1 over e. So again, this negative is in the way. The only way that I can get the e and the ln to cancel is if they're actually touching. So I'm going to write this as e to the ln of 1 over e to the negative 1. So this multiplication just became an exponent. So now the e and the ln will cancel each other out and I'm left with what I was taking the ln of which is 1 over e to the negative 1. To make this negative exponent positive I just flip what's inside here in the fraction so that would be e over 1 or e to the positive 1 so just e. Number 8 log base 2 of 32 so this is going to be equal to something. I can rewrite this in exponential form so it's 2 to the something is equal to 32. This is a lot easier to figure out now. I know that this exponent has to be 5 in order for that to work out. So log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5. Number 9, same idea. If I write this as an exponential, this would be 49 to the something is equal to 7. In order to raise something to an exponent and end up with a number that's smaller than what I started with, this exponent needs to be a fraction. If it's 49 squared or 49 cubed or 49 to the fourth, that number is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The only way this number can get smaller is, again, if this is a fractional exponent. So the only fractional exponent I know that's going to work here is 49 to the half, right? Because that's the same thing as the square root of 49, which is 7. So this something, what I was looking for, is equal to a half. Number 10, same idea. So I have 5 to the something is equal to 1 over 25. 1 over 25 is definitely smaller than 5, so I raised this either to a fractional exponent or in this case with the fraction here, possibly a negative exponent. So I know that 125 is equal to 5 cubed. So in order to get this to come up to the numerator, I would have to negate this exponent. So this would be 5 to the negative 3 is the same thing as 1 over 5 cubed. So that tells me that log base 5 of 1 over 125 is equal to negative 3. Number 11, solve for x. So since I have one ln on one side of this equation and another ln on the other side of the equation, I'm going to first move this to so that I can rewrite this as ln x squared is equal to ln of 4x plus 5. Since I have ln of something equal to ln of something else, I know that in order for these things to truly be equal to one another, what I'm taking the ln of also has to be equal to each other. So I can drop these lns and say x squared is equal to 4x plus 5. When I solve something like this, I just subtract the 4x and the 5, and then I'm going to factor. So x minus 5, x plus 1. I get two solutions here, x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. I know that I can't take the log or the ln of a negative number, so I reject the x equals negative 1, and my only solution here is x equals 5. Number 12. This one's going to be a little bit tricky. So when I solve something like this, the first thing I'm going to do is just subtract this 1 over. So I have e to the negative x minus 6e to the negative x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to get a little creative here and I'm going to factor out an e to the negative x. When I do that, I need an e to the 2x here, right? e to the 2x times e to the negative x. I would add those exponents. There's that negative x. Minus 6, right? When I distribute that back in, I end up with that term. And then in order to get the minus 1 here, I'm going to need an e to the positive x as this last term e to the negative x times e to the positive x. When I add the exponents negative x and positive x, that would be 0, and e to the 0 is 1. From here, I'm going to just reorder these terms. So I'm going to write this as e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 6. Now I can factor this the same way I just factored number 11, or at least in a similar way. I'm going to split this up into two sets of parentheses with e to the x and e to the x as the first term. And I'm going to be looking for two numbers that add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 6. So that's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. And I can double check that this multiplies back out. e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. Negative 3 times e to the x is negative 3e e to the x. 2 times e to the x is 2e e to the x. 
So if I have 2e to the x and negative 3e to the x, I end up with a negative e to the x. And then negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. So I know this works out. I factored this correctly. From here, I just have to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So in this first factor, I have e to the negative x equals 0 or 1 over e to the x equals 0. I cannot get this to equal 0. There's no value that I can plug in for x here and get this numerator, which is stuck as a 1, to be 0. So this factor has no solution. For the e to the x minus 3 equals 0, I can add that 3 over, and then I can ln both sides, and now I have x is equal to ln 3. There's one solution to this equation. For this last factor, e to the x plus 2, I subtract that 2 over. Again, I ln both sides, and I have x is equal to ln of negative 2. I can't take the ln of a negative number, so I reject this solution. And my only solution to this equation is ln3. That's it for log properties and simplifying logarithmic or exponential expressions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.